Hey Booktube, it's Jackie. How's it going? If you're new to me, it's the first time you're seeing my face. Hello, what's up? My name's Jackie. I sit on my floor and I talk about books. So I hope that's why you're here because that's what's going to be happening today. If you're not new to me, thank you for always tuning in and continuing support. I really do appreciate it. So as you can see from the day's title of video, I have another book review for you and this is all on At Her Command by Joey W. Hill, the first installment to the Mistress of the Boardroom series. I had such a good time with this one. I cannot wait to break it down and start getting into it. So without further ado, grab yourself a drink, have yourself a seat, and let's find out what her commands are. All right. So yeah, this was a fun one. This was a fun one. This one took me for a ride. So I decided to have a little bit of fun with it, try to get sort of in character, even have some of my babies out here. As you can see, yes, these are my actual shoes and I have worn them out in public. Yes, I have. Thank you very much. But we're not talking about my shoes. We're here to talk about this fucking kick-ass book. So a little bit about this book, some stats. Uh, we have a first installment to the Mistress of the Boardroom series. And as far as I know, it is just a trilogy and I do own the entire trilogy and I plan on continuing with it. This features a workplace romance with a bodyguard trope and we also have a female dom trope. We feature a sex club with BDSM practices. Oh my God, the practices. We've got pegging, cock and ball torture, whipping, masking. We even see a queening chair in this. Fuck yes. Have you ever seen one of those fucking things? Look it up. They're fucking dope and they look fun as hell. Oh my God. We feature restraining with unique bondage ties um, to emphasize pain and pleasure at the same time. Oh my God, it was fantastic. We even have sensory deprivation. We have sharing. And we have a collaring scene with a body scarification with branding. What the fuck, man? <laughs> what? What? I need a drink right now just for that shit. Um, we also have triggers for alcoholism, domestic abuse off page. And we do have a overall feel of total submission in this book. Now, um, why did I choose this book? I actually chose this book because it was a TBR um, recommendation by Lizelle. So, hey girl, hey, I hope I said your name right. I hope so. She recommended this book to me in my TBR jar. I have a book rec form in the down box below. You can check it out. Recommend me a book. I draw it once a month and then I review it. So that's kind of the deal with this. And this was this month's pick or two months pick and I'm finally able to get to it. But I had a great time. And Lizelle said in her notes that no, she doesn't know anybody else who's read this book. So now girl, we can just talk all you want. We can talk till the, till the towels come home because I got some shit to fucking say. Um, but that's the reason that I picked this book up. I don't know if I would have picked it up without it being recommended to me because I am not usually a fan of female doms. So I was really happy that um, I had another reason to pick up this book because I did have a really good time with it. And it might have changed my perspective on female dom books. We'll see. So a few definitions before we get into it. I mentioned some BDSM practices um, in the stats and one of them is pegging. If you're not familiar with pegging, that is the sexual act of a female using a strap on to penetrate a male from behind. So essentially a female fucking a male with a strap on. That is what pegging is. And we do get a clear cut scene with it. And it's awesome. It's awesome. So if that is something you are looking for, if that is a kink that you're into, it is clear cut and in your face and it's right there. We also have CBT, which is cock and ball torture. And we show this with through the confinement with a penis chassis device. Look it up. I'm not showing a picture, but you can feel free to look it up. It looks kind of scary and intense and it's described the same fucking way. Holy shit. And we also see testicle stretchers in this as well, which I thought was actually a really cool trick the way she used them. Really, really enjoyed that. Um, a queening chair, you get a really good description of it, but feel free, this is what it looks like. Yeah. Don't they look fucking dope? <laughs> Yay. Yeah, it's a good time. But those are some definitions for you so you are aware. <laughs> um, now, a quick summary of this book. We have Rosalinda, who is a dominant and a powerful woman in the boardroom of her marketing firm, but she's also a self-proclaimed, in-your-face dominatrix. All right? Lawrence, our male hero, is a former Navy SEAL who suffered an injury that took him out of the line of fire. He is still physically fit. He can still do pretty much almost everything, but because of his injury, he cannot keep up to the level of an active seal. And that is the reason why he had to step down. But he has this 
embedded need to serve, not only on the field, outside, and protecting. He also has this desire and this drive and this visceral need to serve a mistress. And our two parties meet for an interview because Rosalinda has encountered some trouble with a gang member. She's protecting the gang member's pregnant girlfriend and he gets into her face and basically threatens her life. And her friends, um, her marketing firm, her partners and her friends, they are not having it. They're like, you need to take more precautions. This guy's fucking insane. You need to hire some security. And that's where Lawrence comes in. Except their interview takes place at a sex club. So what was she really interviewing, interviewing him for? Oh yeah, not only is he her security detail, but now she is enticed by his desire to submit and she wants to play and he wants her to play with him. So through a series of sexual experiences, both parties explore how deep Lawrence's sexual submission is, as well as how dominant Rosalinda's, um, how far her dominance will go to protect not only the people she cares about, but also her heart. This thing was a blast. It was a fucking ride. Holy shit. Let's get into it. Okay. So what worked? The overall feel of this book. I need to talk about it because there was this from page one, this level of intensity was just in your fucking face. You knew exactly what you were getting. And that intensity never fucking let up. It never did. It just grew and grew and grew until you were on the fucking edge of your seat. And you're just like, Oh my God, are you going to give me some fucking release here, lady? Or are you just going to edge me to death? Because fuck. God, it was awesome. God, it was fucking fantastic. The feel of this book. And I can't tell you really how the author did it because it was done with different levels of intensity and varying in ways that she did it. Sometimes the intensity was intense, kind of boring, but sometimes it was intense and agitating and you felt a visceral experience where you were kind of like, Ugh, I'm not cool with this. And then there's other times where it was so intense and so erotic that you're just like, fuck me now. I need it because it was so fucking on point in some areas. Oh my God. So, so good. The, j the feel of this book drove this book for me. Oh my gosh. So many times in this book, when I was breaking it down and trying to figure out how I felt about it, I kept coming back to how I was feeling in the book during the breaking down sessions. I kept going back to like, what was I feeling then? Oh, that's right. I was intensely bored because she wouldn't shut up about descriptions. Or oh, this time I was intensely turned on to the point where I needed to stop and go jump my husband and have a good fucking time. And sometimes I was just like, I just really want to wear my pointy fucking shoes and feel pretty and powerful. <laughs> like it's, it was amazing just the varying techniques of intensity that she showed throughout this book. I had a great fucking time with it. Something I want to point out that really worked in this book, and because it's a BDSM novel, I expected to see this, and I was glad that I got it, and it was delivered very, very well. There was so much, so much consent in this book. There was constant conversation, constant checking in, constant going over what things meant, why things were there, explaining tools, explaining toys, explaining techniques, all of this stuff, all of these materials that somebody would need to actually understand and consent to this type of sexual practice. I fucking loved it. Not only did we get in the sexual department, but we also got it in the emotional heart department, which you don't normally fucking see at all. And you saw it. So we got to see consent conversations on both sides, both hero and hero, both hero and heroine giving consent conversations and having consent conversations with their partner. Oh my God. It was fucking dope. Loved it it loved it and i loved how it expanded throughout the book so we have your base consent in the beginning and it expands to include all these different new techniques and new toys and new permissions new feelings new boundaries and parameters within emotional and physical relationship we saw the consent conversation as it grew throughout the book and i thought that was fucking dope oh my god that was amazing that was fantastic. I had such a great fucking time with it. I'm a huge consent conversation um, in romance books, especially BDSM books because of everything that's implied with it and every the amount of trust that you have to have. Oh my God, fucking on point. 
couldn't ask for better. I loved that it was constant. I didn't like that it was constantly brought to the forefront, but I love that it was brought to the forefront enough for us to remember that understanding the limits and limitations does not make you weak, but rather a stronger person. There was a lot of conversations between Lawrence and um, Rosalinda where she would constantly say, look, when I tell you your words are gray and sanctuary, gray is to slow down, sanctuary is to completely stop. I do not want you to try to be all macho, manly, alpha male bullshit on me and try to prove that you can go you can go longer because that's not. That's not taking care of my property. That's not taking care of yourself. That's bullshit. I give you these words because this tells me where I can go and where I can push because we are still learning each other. We are learning to build that trust. And I fucking just ate that conversation up. I fucking loved it. I loved that she acknowledged that someone who is submissive is not a weak person. It's actually a strength because you are aware of where your limitations are and you voice your concerns. And Lawrence fucking did it. When he felt weak, when he felt that he wasn't giving her what he needed, he took a moment, said gray, collected himself, and she would con and she would get in his face and say, don't you dare. Don't you dare think you're weak for doing this. And she would assure him that she didn't see him any weaker in her eyes. She saw him stronger because he voiced where he couldn't handle things. I just thought the care with those conversations and those moments and all those consent, oh my God, it was dope. It was dope. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them, but they were all really, really well done. And I had a great fucking time with them. I thought they were fantastic. I loved the constant communication between Sub and Dom in their non-bedroom scenes and their bedroom scenes. I fucking ate that shit up. So much talking, so much checking in, so much making sure everyone's okay. And what I really enjoyed is not only do you get the parallel in the bedroom, you're getting parallel outside where he's in charge because he's the security guard and you saw him constantly checking in with her. You saw this mirror outside the bedroom, inside the bedroom, and it was just exquisite the way it was done. She did such a good job with this parallel there were times where I didn't really understand how he was a sub. I'm like, how, how are you the same guy? Like what? And you saw them play off of each other so well. Their communication was fucking on fucking point. God damn, it was good. It was so good. If you are looking for books where your romantic partners have a lot of communication, a lot of talking, a lot of understanding, a lot of breaking things down, you want to check this one out. She goes, she does a very, very good job and to go into detail of breaking down some of these higher themed conversations. Um, and we're not just talking about bedroom logistics. We're also talking about logistics of the heart and how to overcome your own boundaries and really put yourself out there. I just thought it was great. I thought it was fantastic and I had such a good time with it. Um, the direct parallel to expanding his limits to expand the emotions between a hero and heroine. So there not only we get the parallel of male alpha out here and female alpha in the bedroom, we also see it where in the beginning, he's only, he can only do so many practices. Um, he's very limited to what he can do because he's so closed off, but he has this need to submit and want to serve her. And as the story progresses and has the trust builds, he starts to experience more techniques, more toys, more different styles, um, more intricacy. As that expands, so does their emotional attachment. You start seeing the dependence of Rosalinda on him. No longer is she just all of her in charge. She really starts to depend on him and you start to see her even open up to him and him open up to her. It's fantastic. The pace of the sexual relationship experiences um bdsm practices is very very correlating with the pace and speed of their relationship so as he tries something new sexually something new emotionally happens or something new emotionally happens he's able to expand and try something over here and during this entire time on both sides there was constant constant communication. This author has constant communication about this book because it is a huge, 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 huge fucking building block of a relationship like this. And I thought it was fucking dope. I absolutely fucking adored it. Adored it.
so fucking good. So good. Um, I loved Rosalinda's character. I loved her. She stood her ground and she did not back down. Did she evolve? Yes. But she had her own views. She had her own opinions and she stuck with them. There is a scene in this book where she is getting in Lauren's face. And Lauren is, Lauren, Lawrence is doing something. <laughs> Lauren is my husband's name, by the way. <laughs> Just a, sorry, this slip of the tongue. Um, <laughs> uh, Lawrence is doing something. Um, he constantly feels the need to take care of his ex-girlfriend who is an alcoholic. And Rosalinda's family has a history of alcoholism and she sees it as him enabling her, trying to take care of her, always trying to come to her aid. And she's like, no you you can't fucking do this you need to take care of yourself because it's just going to keep hurting you and hurting you and hurting you and he says she has a disease she's like no she doesn't have a fucking disease she chose to drink and she's choosing to continue to drink okay and she's choosing to continue to go to you and rely on you and i thought that was really really gutsy of this author um to put that in there because there are times where i have seen girls in my life um, not just the alcohol, but with abusive boyfriends and things of that nature, you feel like you can't get out. You feel almost trapped. And part of it is because you are not making the choice to walk away. And I have told my friends this and I've been there for them. And, but there's a time where you as a person, you cannot keep coming to their rescue and saying, oh, I'll pick up the pieces. Yeah, here you go. Um, she doesn't agree with the enabling past a certain extent and she puts a stop to it. And I really, really appreciated that being in the book because it is a viewpoint that a lot of people hold, but a lot of people won't voice. And I really, really appreciate it. But I also appreciated how she evolved and used their sexual relationship to help heal this, this enablement that Lawrence was doing and didn't even realize that he was doing it. And she pointed out, sometimes you just have to jump in feet first and get in their face and say, look, fucker, here's a go. Here's how it is. And she does. And I love how when he opened his eyes, she just didn't let him fall. She just didn't do it and walk away. She did it and then helped ease him out of it and worked with him and worked with him and worked with him. And it thought it was great. I really, really enjoyed that component. I loved her character. I loved her strength. I loved her, her sarcasm and I loved his banter back and forth. I thought they did a really good job with that as well. Um, I mentioned a little bit of the healing. You see so much healing through their sexual relationship in this book that it bleeds over into their emo emotional relationship. Um, there are many times where Rosalinda will perform an action on Lawrence because she knows it will emotionally eviscerate him and it will make him put everything out on the table. And she just wants to wipe it all away because she wants to have him totally hers. That's her property. She wants to take care of him and to take care of him, she needs to get rid of all the crap and the poison that's in him. So she needs to slowly bring it out. But there are times where she brings it out a little bit faster and you see this scared, what the fuck's going on. But at the same time, after it's all said and done, you see the elation in Lawrence and you see the peacefulness, that, that little bit of peace that he's now gotten. And it's all because she pushed him to do something or say something or be something that he knew he needed to do, but he just didn't have the backbone to do it himself. He needed, he needed that push. And I just loved the healing in this book that she gave him and also the healing that he gave her because he did emotionally the same thing to her. And it was really, really cool to see how both parties did it to each other. She was more blatant in her face, in your face about it. She flat out, flat out said it. Lawrence was more sub submissive or subversive about it. And it was his submission and his willingness to serve and his willing to want to make her happy and give her what she wanted that allowed her to open up herself emotionally to eviscerate the poison that was in her and him to take it and wipe it away. And it would just... Mm, it was so good. It was so good. I had such a good time with it. Such a good time. Um, there is a lot of sex in this book. A lot of sex. I mean, their sexual relationship develops a hell of a lot faster than their emotional one. Um, 
at least in the beginning. Like they start having sex before any emotion behind it happens. But I loved the sex scenes because I loved A, their intensity. B, I loved the um, use of toys and the variety of toys. It went from not having really anything, just kind of using for what was around you at the time to really advanced stuff like the um, chassis devices and the uh, testicle stretchers along with the queening chair and uh, just a lot of fun stuff. And so the very, very end scene where you, <laughs> you get a shit ton, holy crap. Wow, that end scene, mm. I need a cigarette after that one. I don't smoke. I need a few minutes after that one. That was damn. Holy shit. Wow. It was a, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was a good one. It was a good one, but it was out there. It had all the stuff, all the toys <laughs> and everything. It was, it was great. And then some, and then things I didn't know they were toys but they are. <laughs> I thought, okay, that's, that's unique. Yeah. I loved, I love this. I loved the variety of everything that we got to see in this and the author explained it all. I really enjoyed that too, because there were some, um, appliances and toys that I was, I knew existed, but I didn't actually know how they worked. And now I do. And I'm like, well, that might be something I want to try later. That's kind of fucking cool. Uh, honey. <laughs> So yeah, I, I got to learn in this book as well, which I thought was really, really cool. I always enjoy books that can show me new things and teach me new things. So had a great time with that. And then you throw really hot, super sexy, fun scenes, sexy, fun time scenes in with it. And that was great. So not only was I learning, I was turned on, which is another great fucking combo. By the way, when you learn things and turn on at the same time, you're just like, woohoo, yeah, I love these combos. If you're not noticed yet, I love it. Had a great, great fucking time with it though. So super, super good time. There was so much stuff in this book that worked. However, there are some things in this book that don't work. Um, so when I said that there's a lot of intensity in this book, I meant it. And I mentioned that there were some times where it was boring intensity. So in the beginning of this book, we are getting a lot of explanatory sections because Rosalinda is explaining to Lawrence what it is to be in a BDSM relationship, whether it is an emotional bound one or just a dom sub kind of style relationship, all these different variations that can occur during it. So master slave, dom sub, daddy little, or uh, mommy little I, in, in this case, um, all these different variations um, and plenty more. And she's explaining all this and it's really interesting. It's really fascinating. She also explains all the toys and apparatuses that we encounter. Really fascinating, really, really fun time. We explain the safe words. We explain why there are safe words, what the purpose of them are, why you need them and why they are important. All of these things, all valuable pieces of information in a real BDSM relationship. But there's a point in this book where it the ex explanations get to be so textbook style that I felt like I was reading a textbook on how to have a proper BDSM relationship. No joke. At some points in the time, I felt like it was too much, just too much ex explanation because she kept hitting on it, especially when it came to safe words, things that are generally very, very important. And she used them in their conversation, in their consent conversations. But it, sometimes it got to be too much. It was too much of a good thing at that point. I'm like, can we get on with the super sexy fun time and quit fucking talking? Because I'd like to see this guy get his ass reamed. Pretty much. That's what I want to see. So please fucking do it and quit talking about it because you've already explained it five times. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it got to be a little repetitive in the explanations and descriptions and explaining and stuff like that. So it felt kind of like a textbook and I read textbooks a specific way. I read them with very intense, intentional reading where I'm trying to memorize everything. And so I felt at times I was going into the academic brain um, of reading this book. And I wasn't reading this book for academic merit. I was reading it for fun and to experience something new. And that's not academic to me. And I, I felt that juxtaposition of like, why do I feel like I should be taking notes and highlighting this stuff? Um, I mean, I mentally did, don't get me wrong. Cause I plan on trying some of this stuff later, but, uh, yeah, I didn't feel it was just got to be too much sometimes a little bit, a little over 
explanation, if you say so. Um, so I loved their relationship. I loved their relationship. I did. I loved all the consent. I loved the stages of the relationship, but I felt that their relationship went really, really fucking fast. We're not really given a time frame in this book, um, except it feels like it's only kind of a few weeks. And the first sexual encounter with them, damn, damn, that was really fucking fast. Really fast for the amount of trust I believe you have to have to have a successful BDSM relationship. There was, it went really, really fast. But at the same time, that first sexual encounter was compared to what you end up getting at the end of the book, very minimal, very minimal. So this viewpoint, when you reach this point in the book, you're, you're like, wow, this is like hella fucking fast. You like didn't vet this person at all. Actually, somebody else vet them. You fucking didn't. Um, okay. Sure. Right. Alrighty. Um, but as you see the progression of it, you see their emotions develop at the same space, same pace as their sexual relationship. So it kind of balances itself out. It just, in the beginning, it's kind of caught off guard because it's like right fucking there in like the first two chapters. You're just like, wow. Well, alrighty then. Fuck. Like, he doesn't even have the job yet and you're already kind of like fuck damn let's let's do this okay um get down on your knees and call me mistress like do you even know like historic like she didn't know any personal information about him other than he was a navy seal and she's literally rope tying bondage around his penis to constrict it when he becomes erect and you don't even know hardly anything personal about him other than that he will be applying for an interview. He will be interviewing him the next day at your boardroom to be your security guard. Like, what? Sh shit. All right. Cool. Um. All right. So, I just felt it was a little fast. But as the book progresses, the emotional relationship catches up with it. And then they're very, very smooth sailing the rest of the way. So, just... It's kind of abrupt off the, off the cuff. Um, the one thing with the pacing for the actual sexual relationship, um, I had kind of an issue with, uh, is Lawrence. Lawrence has very, is very strict in the beginning about not having his senses deprived and not being restrained. Um, because he wants to make sure that he can get, he can protect her. He doesn't want to be compromised if something were to happen to them. And I feel like something that's that, is that embedded into somebody, the way it's Im described, embedded into him, he would not be doing sensory deprivation and full restraint in a matter of two weeks. Full blown. And I, I just feel like that was kind of fast. Um, for me. But the emotional side of it was just as fast for that. So for me, it was a little too fast, but for some other people, it might not be. Um, so the original security detail plot I found, um, kind of got lost in this book some. Uh, it seemed like an afterthought sometimes. There were times where the author was having Lawrence, like in his inner monologue, think about it as almost like an afterthought because this book is really about their sexual relationship and their emotional relationship. Um, not so much the, what got them together. Um, it felt like just kind of thrown together here and there at times. And all of a sudden it's done. And I still had 120 pages left. Like the original plot of them, how they got together with the security detail, it was resolved. And I still had 120 pages left of this book to read. And I'm like, okay, all right, which tells me it wasn't the main plot. It was just the mechanic to get them together. But I felt like in the beginning, 
it was so heavily relied upon saying that I'm going to be in charge when we're not in the bedroom because I'm your security detail and I have to do all of these things in specific ways. I can't do certain actions because of this thing. It was made such a big deal. And then by the very end of the book, it's like, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. It's fucking done. And I still have 120 pages left to watch this guy get pegged. All right, party. <laughs> like, it's not a bad thing, but it just was like, mm, maybe you should have extended that just a smidge more. Maybe. Um, I would have appreciated just a little bit more expansion on the plot, the main plot uh, of what got them together to uh, not resolve as easy as it did because it wasn't set up to resolve as easy as it did. Uh, the... <laughs> The final scene with the sharing, um, there's a component that I didn't quite understand. And I, it worked for this book. It did. This total ownership, total possession. I got it. I got the symbolism of it. But you can do that with a, other ways, uh, there's a collaring scene where he is collared and made hers 100%. But she needs to share him with her partners at the firm first because they are her family. And they're all dominance in themselves. And I'm just... I didn't quite understand really why she needed to share them. Um, it's explained, but... The way she is in the rest of the book, this is mine. You are my property. No one is to disrespect you. And there's been times where these other people have like talked down to him as a sub and she got in their face and said, you don't speak to him like that. He's mine. You don't treat him like that. Also, And then all of a sudden she's like, I'm going to share you because you're mine. And de facto, then you belong to all of them because they're my family. And... I got the symbolism because he was missing that unit um, feel from being a seal. And I got that, but it just wasn't kind of set up that way. It kind of came out of the blue. And I, when they brought it up, I thought it was just going to be something saying, you know, hey, we don't actually need to do this. But then they followed through with it. And it was a dope fucking scene. Don't get me wrong. That thing was hot as shit. Holy fuck. All the, all the toys, all the toys came out. It was great. But it, the symbolism and the meaning behind it, I felt was kind of lost. I felt like it was a big shock value moment instead of what she wanted to be because of the way she wrote Rosalinda in the beginning. Very, this is mine. You don't mess with what's mine. Um, even to her friends who made sarcastic comments about him or to his face, she got in their faces and stood up for him and like protected him. And it just, and now you're going to share him. Okay. Okay. Um, I, that didn't mesh with me. Um, it felt kind of a shock value, but it was a dope fucking scene regardless. It's a dope fucking scene regardless. I had a good time. Um, spice rating. This thing is five chili peppers because it had all the shit. <laughs> it had a pegging scene, which was, very, very informative, very educational, and hot. Um, so much uh, dominant language with intent on what they were going to do and what it was going to cause. I really enjoyed how she had Rosalinda explain what she was going to do and what kind of sensations they were going to be experiencing. And just all of the different scenes that we got. We got random stuff around the house. We got actual toys. We got a sex club scenes. We got branding scenes. And I mean, branding, I literally mean a fucking cow brand. Yeah, that happened. That happened. That, that actually happened. Um, we get outdoor sex in this. We get lots of toys, lots and lots of toys. We get Pushing your sexual boundaries beyond the nth degree. I This thing, ah, steamy beyond steamy. It was fucking fire when it comes to spice. There is a lot more spice than there is plot in this story, just so you know. So I would definitely declare this as a smut book, straight up, because 
there is a lot, a lot of sex. And there's a lot of implied sexual connotation. There's a lot of implied stuff. And then you get to see it all and it's phenomenal. We also get um, a, a really unique perspective. This is not told in first person. It's told in third person, but you do flip back and forth from the perspectives of Rosalinda and Lawrence. And so well, Lawrence is doing his thing that Rosalinda has him do. Rosalind is over here and you experience what she's doing and kind of seeing how they all kind of weave together in this picture. I thought it was dope on both um, in the actual storyline, the story and the muddy part of the story. I thought it was fucking fantastic. It was great. It was a good fucking time. I literally wrote in my spice rating notes, um, holy shit. Holy shit. That's like, I don't know what else to say other than holy shit. <laughs> Like, wow. Um, I'm looking forward to the next installments to see where she goes with it because I got a sneak peek of the second one and I'm really anxious to see what she does with it because there is some mental health representation in that. Um, a lot more than in this one. We do have some PTSD um, mental health representation in it. Um, so uh, if you're also looking for that kind of factor, you will see a little bit in, it, in, it, in here and you see the healing component through it. I thought it was, it was just really, really well done. It, it was a really well done book. Um, so that brings me to my final thoughts. My final thoughts. Um, I am not normally a fan of female doms. I have only read a few female dom books and I'm not normally a fan of them because they make them uber bitchy. Like uber fucking bitchy and a hard ass and there's no softness to them. And there was bitchiness to Rosalinda and there was softness and you got to see it in equal amounts. You got to see all the sides that can make her up. Um, you didn't just see a ball busting dominatrix and tight spandex letter. You saw a woman in stiletto heels and a Versace dress, dressed the nines who owned the room and knew she did, but didn't have to lift a damn finger to do it. Uh, you saw the confidence of her. You didn't just see a bitch. You saw a confident, well manicured woman who knew her shit and knew how to put a person in her place, male or female, and own a room it's just as easily as she owns a man. And I thought it was great. I loved the way she was represented. Um, could she be a ball buster? Fuck yes. You still see that side of her, but you also see this feminine, soft, um, vulnerable side that you see later on in the story after Lawrence has brought that out in her. And I really enjoyed that we got to see that and we got to see um, her really take that journey. And I really enjoyed that. So definitely if I find more female Dom books where female Doms are represented this way, I think I might be start becoming more of a fan of them because I like the way this one was portrayed. Um, so far, a very positive experience with this one. Um, much more positive than any other previous experience I've had. Um, I believe if you like BDSM romance novels, you will appreciate this because just because of all the techniques that you see in it, all of the um, types of BDSM relationships you can see, the um, the inner workings, the behind the scenes, I think BDSM lovers will appreciate this. And if you practice BDSM, I think you will appreciate this because it's something you can relate to. If you're a female dom, I think you will enjoy this. If you are a male submissive, I think you'd enjoy this. If you're a female submissive, I think you'd still fucking enjoy this. And if you're a male out, if you're a male dom, I think you'd fucking enjoy this. I think this would be a great book to read as like a couple. I, I think this would be actually really fun uh, to do that, to like read a chapter each night with your counterpart and I don't know, have some fun with it. I, I definitely could see some couples doing that. Um, that are definitely in the BDSM lifestyle, I think they would appreciate it immensely. And my last thought is I do plan on continuing with the rest of the series. I bought the rest of the series on a whim and I'm very glad that I did. Um, I am very, very happy that with this installment. I'm very much looking forward to the second one. I don't know when I'm going to pick it up, but I am looking forward to it. And Lizelle, thank you for recommending this book to me. I probably would have A, never found this book because it's not something I would have gone looking for. Um, because like I said, I'm not normally a female Dom fan, but this might have changed my mind. So thank you so much for opening up another world for me that I originally might have shut off because of past experiences. So uh, thank you so much. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. And uh, please keep your recommendations coming because this one was fantastic. And all in all, I gave this book four stars. 
So that's my review on At Her Command by Joey W. Hill, the first installment to the Mistress of the Boardroom novels. And I hope you guys enjoyed this and I will see you guys all soon with another video.